The reason why it's so important for the Heavenly Father to renew our mind is because a lot of times we become what people say about us. They say you will never amount to nothing. They say you will be dead and we're in jail. They say you just like your daddy or your mama. They say you wouldn't get this job opportunity because they didn't get the job opportunity. They say you didn't have the education to hold a certain position because they didn't get the position. And the reason why they saying it about you because they went to school for it. So over the course of time, you start to believe what people are saying about you because at the moment, you're not doing anything to prove them wrong. But it's up to you to either believe what they say about you or you choose to do something different. Not trying to prove them wrong, but prove yourself right by believing that with man it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Sometimes the thoughts that people project on you could be how they feel about themselves. And it can leave you in a negative space that's going on in your mind. Or sometimes we could be heavily influenced by the things we watch. So instead of trying to become who the Heavenly Father created us to be, we start to try to become what we see on social media or television. Or, or we try to do the stuff we hear in the music. That's why it's so hard to become you. Because that influence and that bad company can corrupt our character of becoming what God created us to be. Because you may be trying to mimic someone else's lifestyle because you see the success it brings. You see how it could possibly make your life better, but will it work for you? That's how the devil trap people into a lifestyle that leads them away from the heavenly father. And it can be challenging trying to see yourself in a different light when you look in the mirror. So the heavenly father has to give you a new vision of how you see him and yourself by renewing your mind. And it will require you to step out of your comfort zone because if you stay in a place where you're comfortable at, you will never try to do anything different. And you will only do just enough to get by in this life. But when you step out of that comfort zone, that's how the Heavenly Father can take you to levels that you never even thought was possible. And you begin to learn new things. Things that's going to eventually become a skill set that you didn't have before. See, the Heavenly Father has to change the way we think. So instead of being a reflection of what the world say about us and how we should be and how we should look, we become a reflection of Lord Jesus. And he was clothed in humility. He was humble about his position. He never thought too highly of himself. He kept the heavenly father first at all times in his life, no matter where he was. It didn't even matter who was around. It didn't matter what they said about him. He stood on his faith and that's how we ought to be. That's the whole purpose for the heavenly father to renew our mind. Because if we continue to live in the world, we will always have a carnal way of thinking and we will be self-centered. So by the father redirecting the way we think so that we have our mind set on heavenly things, not worldly things, it will affect our heart also. Because whatever is in a person's heart is who they will be outwardly when they're dealing with people and when they deal with their self. So the devil worked hard trying to keep us in bondage by keeping the wrong stuff in front of us. It's hard to become free from bondage when you're chasing the stuff that's in this world. That's the trap. The devil will 
Always try to place something that's enticing in front of you. That's hard to look away from. See, Lord Jesus said, if you keep your focus on him, he will keep you in peace. But in the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer for he has overcome the world. The true test is not really to overcome the world. It's to overcome yourself. That's the true test. When the devil try to tempt you, when the devil is attacking you, when people start to test your patience, when your loved ones ain't treating you like how you treat them, when you falling out of love with certain people, when you gotta love people from a distance. And the scripture tell us how we should conduct ourselves. When they say, be slow to speak, slow to wrath, but swift to listen. See the scriptures that the heavenly father provide us with are teaching us about ourselves. And it's also teaching us what we should be focusing on. And that's the heavenly father and Lord Jesus. Don't allow this stuff in this world to distract you. It's not about overcoming the world. It's about overcoming yourself. Because when you overcome yourself, only then will you win the war against the world. First, you got to win the war against yourself. And it starts in your mind. The devil don't have that much power over our life. It's what we allow in our life that gives him access to cause torment, to cause pain, to cause hurt. We give the enemy access to steal our joy. We give the enemy access to steal our peace. See, even the scripture tell us the motive of the enemy. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his whole motive. And the only way he can bait you into that trap is by placing worldly things in front of you in order to keep you chasing after whatever it is that's in your heart. A lot of the times the enemy will use your heart desire to try to pull you away from God. So what the Heavenly Father say? Once again, it goes back to the scripture. He said, seek after the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then will all these things be added to you. See, when your heart is in the treasure place of the heavenly father, what can the enemy steal from? You? Every good gift comes from the heavenly father from above. So when the heavenly father start to give you things, because your heart is in the right place. The enemy can't use that to try to steal you away from him. See, the enemy will use things and people to try to steal you away from the relationship you have with the heavenly father. Once again, it goes back to the mind. If you think it, you're going to become it. If those thoughts enter into your heart, that's who you're going to be when you look in the mirror. But the devil don't have that much power over your life. The father placed you in control of your thoughts. Yeah, the devil might try to suggest things to you to try to infiltrate your mind and your heart. But that's why Lord Jesus came here on earth. That's why he laid his life down at the cross. Because he was breaking that stronghold that the world has upon our souls. We have dominion. We have power over the devil through Lord Jesus. But if you don't believe that with faith, the enemy will use every opportunity he has 
to try to keep you in a stuck place. And it will always start mentally. That's why it's so hard for people to step into the newness of life. Because you want the Heavenly Father to do things in your life. You want him to transform everything about you. You want him to give you a clean spirit, a new heart with a renewed mind. But every time you choose sin over the Heavenly Father, that's settling for something less than what the Heavenly Father has to give you. See, when you choose sin over the Heavenly Father, that's you settling in for what the devil has to offer in this world. See, the devil wants you to chase after something that's literally only temporary. So a separation must happen from the old to the new in order to receive the transfer of power against the enemy that the Heavenly Father provided for us through Lord Jesus. Everything you need is attached to who God created you to be. And that's a part of the new you, the new way of thinking, the new way of speaking. Because what's in your mind and what's in your heart is typically what you allow yourself to say out of your mouth. And it goes back to the scripture. The tongue is a raging fire that can defile the whole body if you allow it. There is life and death in the tongue. That's why the Heavenly Father don't like gossip. Because sometimes people will say things in a conversation that's not even true. And when that rumor begins to spread, it could be detrimental for the person they're talking about. Now, that person don't even know what's going on. Because somewhere in that conversation, there was a lie that unfortunately, a majority of people believe. Don't fall into that trap. We got to be careful what we say about ourselves. We got to be careful what we say to people. Allow every conversation to be pleasant. Grievous words stir up strife. But a kind word turns away wrath. Everything we do should be to represent the kingdom of God. Through Lord Jesus, by having faith. We should learn how to have the same patience with people the same way the Heavenly Father has with us because we all have fell short of the glory of God. And that probably won't be the last mistake that we make. But you got to make that conscious decision to speak the words of life in every situation, whether it be good or bad. So it's important that the Heavenly Father change the way we think. And it's important that we continue to follow the counsel of Lord Jesus because his ways is leading us out of captivity. He already broke the bondage. But if we choose to continue to think from a mindset of captivity, then all of Lord Jesus' efforts was in vain. We got to break the chains. We got to begin to see ourselves different. We are attached to a royal priesthood through Lord Jesus. He adopted us out of this world so we can be taken out of darkness into his marvelous light. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Allow the scripture to transform your mind by applying everything to your life. I'm not just talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself too. I preach this same stuff over my life as well. Because it ain't easy. It's a challenge. But see, it's a challenge we must take on in order to see our life be transformed. So we can live in the spirit and not the flesh. See, the world creates people that's unsatisfied, that's not content, that continues to chase 
after meaningless stuff. But the kingdom of God and all his counsel and all his instructions teach us how to live beyond what this life has to offer. So we can experience eternal life. So we can experience that leap of joy in our soul. And what's so beautiful about it, the heavenly father is trying to give you that feeling forever. The scriptures say he will wipe away our tears. We won't have to suffer in agonizing pain. No more sickness. You won't have to thirst again. You won't have to hunger again. You won't have to worry about the feeling of losing the people you love. And we all have an opportunity to meet again as long as we keep the Heavenly Father number one in our life. As long as we believe and love Lord Jesus, for it is written, shall not perish, but receive everlasting life. So keep going. Continue to renew your mind. Fasting is a major part of it because that teaches you how to not only grow in the spirit as you pray and learn more about the Heavenly Father by spending time with him, but it also teaches you how to say no to the flesh. And it builds a resistance against the things of this world. So when you think about Lord Jesus, that's why he used to fast so much when he had to do something major. Because he had to build himself up in the spirit in order to do it. Because even Lord Jesus said, take this cup away from me. Is there another way? But nevertheless, let my father will be done. So. It's important to fast. Anoint your head with olive oil. And keep going. This is something that I'm currently experiencing in my life. But I pray this video helps. I love y'all in Jesus' name. Amen.